This is the January meeting of the CentOS Board of Directors. Um, I have one main topic on the agenda because I know we're going to talk about FOSDEM and some other things. So I wanted to keep it light on the front end. So how does the Board of Directors for CentOS work? And basically it is nominations or self-nominations. And you hold that position until you choose to be removed or there are extenuating circumstances, um, which are still a little bit of a um, work in progress as far as governance. So um, we have two check-ins. We have a January or the winter check-in and then one towards June, July. Um, so that should there be turnover, there won't be turnover all at one time, though a board member can choose to leave at any time. Um, as of right now, one board member, Celeste, has notified the board that she will not be continuing um, due to work-related um, commitments. So we will be holding an election. And I believe according to our governance, we can accept nominations now. We leave them open for a month. So the elections for a new board member would not take place until after Connect. Also during January, I check in with the other leaders to find out whether they are willing to remain in their positions. Um, I am happy to report that everyone is willing to stay, myself as chair, Pat as co-chair, and Thomas as secretary. Now, I'm going to wait until a new board member is seated that is correct, and no two thanks, Celeste, for her work. Um, in case the new board member would like to run for a leadership position. Um, but basically, once a year, I confirm that everyone would like to remain in a position, and then we open up to the board to find out if they have faith in their leadership and would like us to continue in those positions, or if they would like to have an election for us to sit down and be replaced, or even if someone just wants to run for a position. So, for example, um, say Pat and Josh would like to be chair. They can step at, up at that check-in point and say, we would like to run for your position. And then we would have, if I'm willing to stay, a three-way election for that position. Um, the reason why we do this yearly, the check-in and also the vote of confidence in leadership is so that the CentOS board is never a um, dictatorship for life. Um, so we have the fact that no one is stuck in a position should they want to sit, step down. No one is stuck in a position if they would like to run for something else. And if the board has no faith in us, we can have an election. And should a vote of lack of faith, then that person would not be included in the election for that position. There's no point. You've already said you have no faith in us. So is that clear for everybody? OK. Yes, thank you. So that is the board tenure process. And I believe we're gonna discuss a little bit in public at Centa, um, at Connect. We're talking about having a panel so that people can who don't attend the meetings can ask questions at those times. Um, so I only picked three ongoing issues. I figured we'd want to talk to about Connect a bit because they're isn't um, a meeting beforehand. And for organizational reasons, I figured we'd want to talk about what's going on there. So our three randomly selected issues are number 118, decision needed for open CPE initiative on lists.centos.org. Um, Sean, when I checked that the note was from you about um, checking with Fedora about sharing their mailing list server. Okay, I asked about that. Um, and I I don't remember. Um, oh, I asked about that. I and mean, it's buried in my email. Yeah, and it was four months ago. Yeah. Um, there was, I remember there was some talk about whether it was actually easier on, on their end. Um, and I, I need to follow up on that to see what is the easiest course of action for, um, for them. Because I, my recollection is we were proposing doing that 
for the express purpose of making it easier on the people who are running this stuff, right? So, um, okay, I will, um, I'm gonna follow up because I, like I said, I had like the initial email conversation and then, um, and then I fell off. So let me, I'll add that to my. Okay, and if you can add notes to the ticket, yep. that will help me not prematurely bring that one up as a random. All right. Got it. And Samuel right. and others worked really hard to get Mailman into Apple 9. So hopefully, hopefully. And I think that was part of the timing of this issue being opened by IFA. Um, that they wanted to do some upgrades. I believe there were multiple concurrent saying there was a technical blocker on getting mailman in uh, Apple 9, which is now resolved. So technically, this should all be doable. And then there was discussion of, is Fedora OK with hosting our stuff? And does it make sense for us to host our stuff with Fedora? I think those were the two things. Yeah. And then I did ask, Justin was fine, like from a community standpoint or whatever. I think I talked to Justin and Matthew and they're like, yeah, whatever. Um, so it's just a matter of the Infra team um, being okay with it. Sorry, go ahead. And there was some discussion about discourse, but I think everyone preferred remaining on mailing lists. I think we talked about this before, but like my, yeah. my gut feeling is as long as Fedora is going to keep having lists, and it doesn't look like Fedora is getting off list anytime soon. It seems premature to discuss some setting lists for CentOS if we can just piggyback on their infra. Right. And we do have the deadline of CentOS Linux 7's end of life. So it would be better to do it sooner than that. Any other comments on 118? All right, our next randomly selected issue. Guidelines for Quay usage or key usage for CentOS SIG. Um, Josh, you own it. I do. <laughs> I believe you were going to check if uh, what namespace and options existed inside of uh, the key infrastructure. I, I have not followed through on this activity. So I will write it down and do so. Ah, yeah, as Neil notes in the chat, uh, is there subgroup support? Is that on the roadmap? Is that never going to happen? Thank you for that, Neil. It is very appreciated. We, we discussed this right before the holidays. I remember this now, and it completely blew out of my brain over the break. Yeah, that's so. probably when it got assigned to you. Um, it says assigned. But it's, it says ago. seven months ago, but we may have just not put comments in here. Yeah, I. it's coming back to me now. Um, the subgroup support is something that we need to follow up on. The general... Uh, the general approach that we discussed in the last board meeting was you know, the things that, um, that the hyperscaler SIG has done to distinguish themselves from uh, from like an official quote unquote CentOS stream artifact is great. Uh, and that's probably the template we're gonna use going forward if I'm remembering the correct issue. But the subgroup support is, uh, is good to follow up on. Okay. So that, this is definitely something we should, and I'll put a note on it, for the documentation. Maybe we'll work on that Monday after Connect. Let me put a note on that. Let me know if the dogs are being too, too loud. I can put on a headset. June, uh, egg on face, we'll put it that way. 
Well, then I happen to walk out because Brian is here, Mr. Stinson. Um, you are my next randomly selected. Number 89. Public integration testing for stream. And I'm not sure I remember what this one was about either. Pat put a comment in that GitHub CentOS SIG dash core dash T underscore functional seems to be the place to start. And I also put in a comment the documentation needed to complete this issue. There was a wiki link. And it was I feel like we should yeah. loop in the integration SIG now that that exists. This seems like something in their wheelhouse. Okay, and I'm putting that note in the ticket. Yeah, because so I, I remember we 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 recommended um, we recommended taking contributions in the T functional repository back when we discussed this the first time, and I thought that was the the extent of this because we handed that over to uh, the stream team who is uh, they've basically gotten to gotten it to a state where it's running automatically on a compose level right now. Uh, Neil mentioned the work that they're doing to turn this into a, um, a, a TMT format type of test and integrating it with the existing CI system. And then the integration SIG is also uh, gathering up some community contributions which have already been accepted. So I'm not sure if there's much else that we need to do here because we've, we've taken action on most of these uh, these items in here and all of that stuff is in progress, so. Okay. Um, can you update the ticket beyond what I just put in there about the integration SIG being a possible lead for this? Yeah, yeah, I think if we're okay, I think we should do an update and then close this ticket. Okay. I am good with that if you wanna put the details in there. Nice. Okay, Sean, the floor is yours if no one has any more comments on that last randomly selected ticket. Okay. Um, I didn't put a lot in there. Uh, I guess I'll just let you know where we are. Um, as you know, we will have a conference on February 1st and 2nd. Uh, registration for in-person is is over 80 now, which is, which is pretty good. Um, I get more like every day and I'm sure there will be walk-ins. Um, so um, if you know people who are attending who haven't registered or if you just wanna like tell people that they should come, then please ask them to register. Uh, we're putting in a swag order, I have to get numbers into catering. So while we will definitely allow um, <clears throat> walk-ins, like we might not have, um, we're doing hoodies and we might not have hoodies for all walk-ins. I think what I'll do is Everyone who registers, like there's a hoodie set aside for you and walk-ins will get, um, maybe only on Friday, we'll start distributing to them. So um, I just wanna make sure like if you registered, you get, you know, you, you get the swag. So um, we will need staffing. I have a staffing uh, grid set up in a, a GitLab issue. Um, so if you could claim some spots, um, if you have some, you know, some bandwidth to, to help out with, um, with any staffing. I have other people that have offered to staff and I haven't um, sent this link around to them yet. So there's there's a number of people who will add on to here. So don't feel like we have to fill it up between the people in this meeting. Um, so, and I, I think like only promo SIG members are able to edit. I think it's probably like me and Amy maybe are able to actually edit the thing. So just like leave a comment on the ticket and I'll edit the, the grid. Um, and speaking of staffing grid stuff, uh, tangential, uh, we will have a CentOS booth at FOSDEM and there will be a staffing grid for that. Uh, I just, I had a meeting with Justin earlier today and we're just gonna set up a shared grid to sign up for, um, you know, sign up for a slot at CentOS, CentOS booth or at the Fedora booth, we'll just put it all in one grid. The booths are next to each other so we'll be able to uh, share a lot of resources. So I will, um, I'll pass that 
link around when we get to it. Um, doo -doo -doo. I don't know. Uh, I've talked to Amy a lot about, I've been having a really hard time finding a, um, a reception location for uh, Thursday evening. I'm trying to do a Thursday evening reception, trying to do like a dessert and drinks, not like a full, um, not a full dinner thing. So like break for dinner and then come back just for some drinks and stuff. And I have emailed a lot of places and um, so far have not had luck. I'm in contact with the hotel so and they can do it. I just have to get them some details. We might end up being there. Um, I'd, I'd kind of like to go out somewhere and do something special, but um, you know, hotel would be cool too. So um, if you have awesome venues in Brussels that you know about or suggestions, I'm all ears, but at this point we might be looking at a hotel thing. Um, Sean, did you ever figure out how many you want to target for this? My, because um, we've been all over the place on that. We have been all over the place. So the places I emailed early on, I was saying 150 to 200, because um, I didn't have a good sense of how many people yet. Um, 200 is kind of our cap for for the for the venue. Um, I don't think we're going to hit 200. I think we'll be in the 120, 120 and up range, maybe 150. I think 150 is probably a, a reasonable maximum for how many people we'll have. Um, it's so hard to tell. We had 20 to 30 walk-ins last year. Um, so it's just, that's the nature of FOSDEM. You know, people come in um, and they're there early and they're like, oh, there's a thing happening. I'll go there and, and uh, drink their coffee. So um but how many do you think would come thursday night yeah so that's a good point so a lot of people like who are just coming in for fosdom you know like they see a friday thing and they're there on friday already but with the reception on thursday maybe that won't get as much walk-in traffic so that's a really good point um i just don't know but you know clearly i need it for um the number of people we have if i can find something that's you know only on the, the lower end 100 120 or so um if it's a cool thing i might consider doing it amy and i had talked about like doing um like tickets to get in um to, to get into the registration thing and like if you if you registered you get a ticket if you're a walk-in you know maybe maybe not depending on how many slots we have left so um you know people need to register so um i don't know i am continuing to work on a registration uh, on, a, on a reception option um and i'm also trying to get the av set up and some other logistics that are boring and you probably don't want to hear about so let me hit up some of the open infra people who mm -hmm. live in belgium and see if they have any ideas okay um yeah it'd be cool our uh, schedule is very full. I know the schedule's not on the website yet. I'm waiting on um, a few more uh, speaker confirmations. Um, just because the only reason I'm waiting on them is because uh, I know some people have scheduling constraints and maybe can't do Thursday. And so, um, you know, I don't want to like schedule somebody and then they um, then they get back to me and say, oh, I can only do Friday and I put them on Thursday. So, um, but even without confirmations, I'll go ahead and get stuff in get the schedule up this week. Um, most of the stuff is up. Um, and the, the meetups are full too. So I was surprised that those filled up because we have uh, four rooms and two slots. So it's, um, uh, it's a pretty good turnout and a pretty good turnout on the sessions. And I'm like wondering if next year there should be more, I don't know what to do short of making it three days or two tracks. And anyway, that's a discussion we can have later, but um, there's a there's a, a a lot of uh, a lot of interest and a lot of good talk submissions. I had to turn stuff down that was that was good. So um, that's where we are. Are there questions? Are there things you want me to address specifically about the planning? Anybody? Um, Dev room. Oh. There will be a distros dev room. Um, there will also be a staffing grid up for that. So if you want to help out um, and take a take a slot of uh, helping out with the dev room, that would be cool too. Uh, I don't have the staffing grid yet for that. I think Justin's setting that one up too. So I will let you know when that happens. So that's on Sunday. Uh, and so <clears throat> Sunday we'll 
you know, obviously need staffing for that, but also we need staffing for the booth on Sunday because it continues to exist on Sunday as well. And um, I probably won't be able to get open. Like I'll I'll go do setup and tear down at the booth, but I don't think I'll be able to put in time. Yeah, and once we have the staffing grid, I will share it with the OKD community and the RDO folks that are coming. So we'll get as much staffing on those sides of things as well. And then we had someone, I think, from CubeVert who wanted to come and staff our booth too. So we'll, we'll let him know as well. Um, I can't think of anything else. Oh, and I'm, I'll, I'll, um, I'll make a reservation for uh, the board dinner. I've got our yeah. feedback on that, so. Oh, and um, Justin is working, and I think we've got the location down for Saturday night. Yes. Yeah. Yes, so um, Saturday night we will do, um, like last year, a, a uh, Fedora and CentOS combined contributors dinner. Um, Last year, our uh, we were forty people according to our registrations. Um, Justin got, uh, I think, a space with with room for fifty. So, um, if you're attending, you know, definitely plan on, you know, any board members or people who are here in this meeting are, I think, certainly welcome to be at the contributors dinner. So, um, I'll I'll let you all know. I'll send the link. Uh, I think I think Justin was setting up a, a registration link for that too. Yeah, because he needs to get in the number of vegan, vegetarian, and non-vegetarian meals. Right, right. So that's so we'll have um, so Thursday we're planning on on a reception, but we'll break for dinner, so that won't be dinner. Uh, Friday we'll have a board dinner, and that'll be smallish. And then Saturday is the big contributors dinner. Um, there are no meal plans on um, Wednesday or Sunday. Um, Although um, the distros dev room organizers might do um, might do a dinner on Sunday, so that might be a, a commitment for me personally. Yeah, Wednesday the chaos board is getting together for dinner, but otherwise I'm available. Yeah, it might, it might and Wednesday already, you know, like we can have dinner and just whatever. Yeah. Nice. All right, that is our agenda for today. Does anyone have any other business SIG reports that are not on the agenda or anything else they want to bring up? I wasn't sure how much time Sean was going to have or what questions there were going to be about the board. Um, so I didn't go overboard with how many random tickets I selected. I have one other thing, and a, okay. I guess a question. So we're planning on a board panel. Uh, it'll be scheduled for about 45 minutes. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to, um, so last year we just kind of did it as an AMA and it didn't get a whole lot of questions. So the intention this year is to do it more like a panel uh, and I will I will moderate and ask some questions. We'll take audience questions if they're there, but we'll have a, you know some questions. So I think what I will do is just ask, um, ask people to send questions in advance. Um, I'll email CentOS Devel and maybe a social media post or something saying, "Hey, would you, you know? Could you could you do that?" Um, so uh, so we'll have the the board up there. The question is, do we um, do we want to try to dial in remote board people or just do it with who we have um, who we have there? I think there's four of you there. And I know we were targeting the last session of Thursday so that if we got Perfect. done early, people could go to dinner and have more time. Yeah. Are we going to have AE support to be able to get people dialing in? I don't presently have a plan for that, but I could put my laptop up there and set up a video conference. I can bring the meetup camera I used the last time, if that's helpful. That's I was cool. I was thinking of bringing that uh, for the Hypercell meetup if we had a remote folks. Uh, but I, if it's useful for other stuff, you're more than welcome to borrow it. Bex? Um, I tried to dial in and join remotely at last FOSDOM. 
unless it may have been me where I was trapped in paradise, but unless there's a significant technology change, it was not something that I could have kept up with and participated in in any useful way as a virtual member of the stage. There was a sufficient amount of lag um, and other challenges. And I just don't know that we're equipped from a technology perspective to do this as a remote friendly presenter meeting. Okay. Yeah, I would also say like, for those of us that won't be there, time zone is a challenge. And like the reason I won't be there, which I found out today, ironically, uh, is because I will be somewhere else, right? So like I have another activity going on at the same time. Um, so I don't know that it's actually worthwhile to try doing remote, but I do know that maybe like Pat, are you interested in doing a remote participation kind of thing? I mean, I'd be happy to show up, but I'm kind of with Lex that a uh, remote is not ideal. Okay. So uh, he here's a suggestion. Instead of trying to be virtual, if we do have questions that target a specialty area of a board member who is not there. What about getting their response that we could read it as part of the panel? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Yeah, for any questions we have submitted ahead of time. And I can, I'll share the questions with you all before, you know, so you can prepare. Obviously, you know, we might get stuff from the audience or whatever that, but any of the, the questions we have ahead of time we can definitely share around and prepare. Ourselves. Yeah, and we should definitely do that anyway. So there's not too much over talking on each other. I mean, someone might want to follow up on somebody else's response. Yeah. But that way we don't have five people who want to answer one question and no one who wants to answer another. And we can just be a little more organized, which is kind of where I think we failed with the ask me anything. Um, so a little more organization on the front side for the panel. I think will help. Mike? Oh, yes. I just I just want to say as as um, as a member that's not going to be there in person, I have been planning on uh, participating remotely as much as I can. And I'm willing to try, but I do share all the concerns previously raised about the technical difficulties. So uh, any what you were saying about um, uh, a more text based. Um, approach would probably be safer. Josh? Yeah, I was just going to say, like, I'm I'm totally fine providing written answers that you all can read. Uh, if there will be AV equipment that is usable local, like, I could record answers for questions if that's something that people, like a video, right? That way, it's my words. You don't have to repeat it. Nobody has to try to interpret like it. That. Stuff like that. Um, yeah, that's a good that's idea. Said, like, if we're going to do that, I would want to know, like, which questions should I answer if they're not addressed specifically to me and, like, who's going to cover the other ones and things like that. So. So why don't we plan on once we get some questions sent in, having a short working session so that we can divide up questions that people are going to target. And for those of you who want to make a recording of a response, which I think is a really great idea, we can do that and it'll be organized. Yeah, I mean, I know it's not um, quote unquote interactive, but it saves you all from reading. <laughs> and then someone who is there could follow up on any further questions. Yeah. No, I think that's a really, really good idea. I like it a lot. Do we have anything else? All right, then everyone is going to get 27 minutes back to their day. I appreciate everyone's hard work on the board this past year, including Celeste. Um, we will miss her. And I look forward to another year of it. Take care, all. Take it easy. Thanks, everybody.